so I'm back with this uh, painting the plaster piece um, that we started on and <clears throat> you can see that I've added some plaster to the leaves of my flowers um, I haven't added any plaster to the stems yet I'm not sure if I will um, but I can always go back and do that if I need to and then um, I did a little bit of a color study um, with some of the colors that I have and I really kind of like this rosy color that I have <clears throat> and that is a mix of uh, dioxazine purple, uh, permanent magenta, and some titanium white is the lightest color here, this, this color here. And the color above it is just the purple and the magenta together. So I think that's going to be the color of the flower. And um, I decided against going with watercolor. I had thought that I would do watercolor with this because I have a color in watercolor paints that I thought would be really pretty, this color right here. Um, but I think I can mix something close to that with the acrylics that I have. Um, the reason why I'm not going with the watercolor this time is because watercolor does not absorb into the plaster um, as well unless you mix the color and the plaster together at the same time, then it's colored all the way through. I would just be coloring on top and it won't go all the way through and um, it will be very unforgiving that way I won't be able to um, I could layer it I could layer the colors um, and get the color that I want <clears throat> but when you first lay it down that's the color that it's gonna stay unless you layer on top of it so I'm going to go ahead and get started here with the acrylics that I have. And again, it's the permanent magenta, the dioxazine purple. And I'm going to put out um, some of the titanium white. And I'll probably start out quite dark um, on the um, inner parts of the flower and then get lighter as we go out. Um, just because the biggest concentration of the color of the flower is going to be in this center. And my brush that I'm going to use is just a flat brush. Um, nothing fancy or anything, but I go ahead and wet my brush a little bit and dampen it on the towel. And a lot of people like to mix with a palette knife, but I mix just with um, my brush and I'll pull some of the color out and then I will add to that and just mix it right here. and. What I have here is just wax paper. Um, I have a plastic palette that I could use, um, but then you just have to wash it. And that's kind of a pain sometimes to get all the paint off of it. And I don't have a dedicated sink. I don't like to wash it in the sink where I wash the dishes. Um, it's probably not a good idea. So I'm just mixing up a good amount of paint here. Add just a little bit of white to this for now. All right. I know it's hard on the way I have the camera set up to see how I'm mixing. And I think I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of 
red that I have, which is a brilliant red. Um, and that's going to tone it down and bring out that rosy color that I want. So just a tad of the red going in with the purple and the magenta that I have already mixed. And really, I'm not too fussy or particular um, with color. I feel like I can mix well enough that um, I can get color that I'm happy with. And I'm just going to go around the circle of the center of the flower. And like I said, just not being extremely careful here. And the fun thing about this plaster is that when you go along the ridges, it will already look darker as long as you don't keep pulling the paint away from it. So just going out here a little bit with this color. And don't be afraid that you can't, you know, mix this color again. It's just the three basics and you can get pretty close. Um, the purple, the magenta, and some red. Now, like right here in this section, that's probably going to be a little bit darker. So I can pull just some of the purple and the magenta and um, make that darker, make it a darker color. Their flowers in nature have color variation. So we want to make this look natural, just like you would be seeing a flower in real life. So I'm gonna just darken up some of these areas here. And like I said, I don't normally clean my brush. Um, if I already have a color on here that I like, and I'm darkening this, um, it's not gonna hurt it. The color that was on there before was lighter anyway, so it's not gonna hurt it to be an unclean brush. So some of those areas darken pretty well. And I'll go ahead and go over this lighter color that I had, just in some areas. And you don't want to make the whole thing dark. You just want to Get some areas that um, you think are going to be darker. Like right here where these two petals meet is probably going to be darker because of the concentration of color in that area. And don't worry if you're not getting into all the crevices um, because this is textured. You know, it is harder to get in some of those areas, but we can take a thinner brush and go back in and get those areas. All right, so I'm gonna mix some of that lighter color again, some of my purple, some of my magenta. Get that where I want it and then some of the red.
and maybe just a tad of white along with that and we'll keep going out further here the plaster is just fun because it makes you know every stroke you will have these little lines and ridges and and that's pretty true to form for most things in nature they're going to have lines and ridges and be taller here or shorter here and it just makes it fun now the further flat I lay my brush there's gonna be different color there and um, probably the darker color um, got pushed back on the brush and I don't like to waste paint so I will pull that color off of there so that I've used all of the paint on my brush and just I don't know if you can see it real well. I'll move this here. How we're getting this darker line where it's raised up, the ridges are raised up here. Um, it's just a neat thing with the plaster. You get all those lines and ridges. And doing this way, um, I am just rinsing my brush off just a little bit to give it a little bit more water here um, and you don't want to press too hard with your brush I mean the plaster um, can come off up here um, you just have to be careful um, and not press too hard and Going back and mixing a little bit more, and I might um, go a little heavier with the white. And this is, you know, what you call uh, value, uh, the color value. Um, many shades of value that you can get. just by mixing colors. Get down in the groove a little bit if I can. And another thing that you can do to help your texture stick out more is um, to not darken the areas too much. Um, otherwise, you're going to lose that line. Um, but you can go back and, and highlight. Once again, just getting just the tiniest bit of water on the brush. So some of those ridges and lines uh, may not want to pick up the paint. Just depending on your brush stroke, like this line here is picking it up really well um, and leaving a shadow, which is a cool effect also. And these didn't pick it up quite as much, so they're a little wider. I'm, I'm fine with that. You don't have to cover every, um, every square inch of the painting. Um, don't need to be too fussy with that unless you know you don't like how this is looking um, certainly can go back through with a small brush and try to hit all those places but um, I think it brings a more realistic look to leave some of those white areas um, as they are um, the Sun you know light and Sun are going to hit areas differently and Maybe make them look a little more translucent and, and white. So that's a great thing about painting. I mean, this is your interpretation and 
You can leave it just like it is. So we just continue on here, getting some paint on here. Um, and this is, you know, it's dry, so it, it soaks up the paint uh, fairly quickly. So you're probably not going to get as much out of your paint with this because it soaks it up so much. Um, and you have to keep, you know, mixing more paint which is not a problem, but if you're not used to that, you might think, you know, something's wrong with the paint or it's too dry. Um, it's really not. It's just the way that uh, the plaster reacts with the paint and it just kind of soaks it up and you have to make more. Uh, more often than I would if I was just painting on a uh, regular canvas alone. So I've gotten out a little bit more of the red to mix in with the magenta and the purple. And I think it's coming out a little darker than what I had thought, but I still think that the color pairs well with the background. So that's it's okay. Just getting so I mix the paint uh, maybe a little dark this time. And I want to go a little lighter on the edges of the flower, um, but I can come back with um, a lighter color, certainly, and get those areas. <clears throat> and like I said, I'm using all of the paint on my brush just to get that color off of the brush. So I like to use every bit that I have. And so by doing that, it's lightened up this area just by doing that. So that's another option, just using all the paint on your brush. And I didn't really decide yet which direction the light's gonna come from. So the light, I believe, is gonna come this way. So these will be a little bit more highlighted than these flowers over here, or petals. So again, just tap bit, tap bit of water on my brush and um, mixing out more of the paint. And since this is textured, you might find it a little more difficult to make your strokes. Um, the brush doesn't have a completely smooth surface to go along, so it uh, is a little bit more difficult to paint on when it's textured. It'll take a little bit more time also to get this Get the paint all in the grooves and but when you have a really frigid snowy day like we do today there's not a whole lot going on other than some chicken and dumplings in the crock pot that are going to be really good later so i've got time I guess now would be a good time to tell you that I am not sponsored by anyone. Um, I'm just doing these uh, videos just to kind of help someone out there who maybe has been thinking about starting to paint and 
really doesn't know where to begin or is looking for a challenge, something new to do. Um, these The plaster is super cool. I really love it. And it's been a good experimenting um, process for me. So I'm, I'm sure that someone else would find the value in um, learning how it works and what you can do. Um, with the plaster. It's just another another way to have an express expression of art. And still this color is quite dark. Towards the center here it will be darker. And I can certainly lighten this up with with white so And again, I'm not trying to be too harsh with the brush because um, this plaster can flake off. Um, when I get finished with it, I will um, protect it with some archival spray. Um, so I'm not too concerned, but at this point, I really could mess it up and knock off some of the plaster. In. I'm gonna add quite a bit of white to this and see how we go. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's much lighter. And maybe just lay this in on the edges here. brush and you'll know um, when you need to do that it'll get really dry and you won't be able to push any more paint come along here and see I can lighten those edges just paint over the top I can add some highlights here some more purple and magenta and red and white and this is what my brush looks like it's quite dirty and like I said that's okay that's what I like about a dirty brush is I'm gonna get different color values See how this is a little darker than this and by using that unclean brush I can get some of those colors. And like I always said, you know, you might look at this and say, oh, that looks like a mess. Um, but you really do need to let it dry um, before you say that. Take a picture of it. 
before it's dry and then take a picture of it after it's dry and you will see changes. The paint does change um, with the drying process. So don't let it scare you. Just lay the paint down and if you're not happy with it, you can always go over it again. You can even go over it with a different color. Um, I might go ahead and just do some purple and white with a little bit of water. I really do hope you will try this. If you have some paint at home, don't worry about the type or the kind or anything like that. You can use any paint. You can do this in watercolor. Um, just experiment with it. It's, you're not going to hurt anything. It's, it's just paint and as long as you're not, you know, using it to paint the dog or anything like that, it, you're not going to hurt anything. And if it's not really the way you want it, let it completely dry. Get some white gesso gesso over the whole thing and start over. Um, there's no harm in that either. All right, I need some more paint, some more of the magenta. Um, I always start out with a small amount. I don't like to waste paint, so I start out with a small amount and then um, go back and make more if I need to. purple and magenta and maybe a little heavier on the magenta this time and see we've got another another value color this is more on the purple side and since this petal is going to be away from the light more in this area it can stand to be a little darker color. And that again was just the purple and the magenta mixed together. And so you can just slightly go over these ridged areas with this color and it's going to darken those. And already we've got so many values of that dusty rose color to lavender And don't worry about getting outside of your lines either. A little more of this lavender on this side. pretty good here and um, the uh, 
Now I'm adding some red into my purple and magenta. Quite a bit of it actually. And um, some of that lighter lavender color mixed together. And I'm going to come down here with it. And really the trick is layering. You want to layer your colors. Um, this is going to, the layering will give depth and highlight and shadow um, to your painting. is how you would see it in life. And if you lose um, too much of your ridges, um, you can come back with a light touch and a darker color and kind of go over those places um, that you want to highlight. So, or you could, if you're, if it's dark, you could go over it with light. So right here, there's darker veins. You can go in between them, you can go on top of them. And like I said, it's okay to go outside um, and, and give like a shadow look. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, but if you don't like the way that looks, um, you can paint over it after it dries. Or you could right now take some water um, and pull that off of there. But be careful because you will pull the color that is on the bottom also. So you'll pull the paint right off the canvas. A little more water, a little more of the light color, and I might add some white to that also and come up in here where we have to rinse my brush out. Just a little water and just some of the yellow ochre. Maybe just with a tiny mix of green, the sap green, and go in and layer some color on the leaves.
And I'm not completely happy with these petals here. I like this pinker color. So I'm going to take some more magenta and just a touch of purple. Just give the pink more of a chance to stand out. mix with the magenta and that will give it a more of the burgundy a little better. More on the pink side than on the, the purple side. So really from this point, it's just tweaking things to the way you want them. To the color that you like. bristles. Just go over those ridge lines. Get some color on the edge. It's not all white. Just 
this looks like a little new color here. Some more of the brilliant red and the magenta. Hitting these ridged areas. Now I think it's becoming a little more clear. The uh, the ridges. starting to stand out more now. Just more of this uh, magenta and the red. Magenta. And this time I put a little purple in. To deepen that color. making sure I hit the edges here really well.
I'm just going in and, and dabbing the brush. And that will also give you depth of color. Not so many uh, brush strokes, but you can see now that we have more paint on here that you don't see the brush strokes as much as we were. Hopefully you can see now that once we've got some paint on there, we can go back in and continue to layer, and that will help take away some of your brush stroke marks. that out. Again, trying not to be extremely rough with the brush. And if you feel like you're starting to pull the plaster off the canvas, um, you can stop and, and dry, dry it with a hair dryer if you need to. And that will help. dark just about perfect amount of dark color underneath and now you can just continue to layer color on top and that will create your shadows dark color
water to your brush and it gets too dry. Pulling in some more of the magenta. A little bit of purple. And you need a little bit more red. You can twist and twirl the brush as you go. twisting and turning it, you'll cover more of those white areas. And don't worry if you do pull the plaster off or pull the paint off from the underneath, let it dry completely and then you can go back in and fix it. Over the horizon Over the horizon Over the horizon